Hi, I'm Dr. Kaplan from Helios Telemedicine for Men, and today's topic is the treatment of primary testosterone deficiency. In the normal man, the testosterone levels are highest in the morning and fall through the day according to their circadian rhythm. I break treatments for male hypogonadism into those that are physiologic, meaning that they maintain this circadian rhythm, and those that are non-physiologic, meaning that they overwrite this rhythm. The non-physiologic treatments are then broken down into short and long-acting treatments. When we talk about physiologic therapies, the first thing to discuss is whether or not we can treat the primary testosterone deficiency as we would secondary testosterone deficiency by stimulating the hypothalamic pituitary testosterone axis, we may just be able to give the testes the push they need to get us back into the normal range. If that doesn't work, we can always move on to testosterone, but it doesn't always work the other way around. Physiologic testosterone replacement medications include swallowed tablets and gels, creams, and patches that are applied to the skin. The creams and patches must be applied to the skin, allowed to dry before getting dressed, and left on for at least two to three hours prior to being washed off. And they must be washed off prior to skin-to-skin -to -skin contact with women and children to prevent them from absorbing testosterone right from your skin. The patches are applied to the skin and left on for hours at a time. These treatments work very well for many men but most eventually find them to be somewhat inconvenient and move on to other therapies. The short-acting, non-physiologic agents include oral trochies and buccal patches that dissolve in the mouth where the testosterone is absorbed right through the mucous membranes there. And there is also a gel which is sprayed into the nose. I cannot include them as physiologic as they are administered more than once a day, and that results in an even testosterone dose throughout the day, rather than one that falls as evening comes on. The long-acting agents include testosterone solutions that are injected and pellets that are inserted under the skin into the fat there. The time frame for them lasts anywhere from weeks to months, so they overwrite the control axis. The testosterone injections can be made into the muscles, IM, or into the fat below the skin, sub-Q. The subcutaneous route is more common in Europe, but is becoming more popular in the United States, and both are good, valid regimens. The halftime in the blood for testosterone given this way is in the 10 to 11 day range, so the dosing can be done every one to three weeks. I prefer weekly doses because the doses themselves can be smaller and the peaks and the valleys stay within the therapeutic range. The testosterone levels rise with the subsequent injections up till they reach a plateau after about the fourth or fifth injection. So we can draw a testosterone level just prior to the fifth or sixth dose and measure it and be able to adjust our dosage from there. Testosterone powder can be compressed into pellets about the size of a grain of rice. If we know the IM or the subcutaneous dose of the injected testosterone, we can calculate the number of pellets needed to be inserted as a starting dose for pellets. The pellets are inserted in a physician's office using a very simple procedure. They then dissolve over the next three to six months, making them an excellent choice for men who are going to be away from medical facilities for extended periods of time or for those who just want a one and done treatment every three to six months. There are, however, men who dissolve these pellets much more quickly, and for them, they may reach supra-therapeutic levels in the early month, followed by a month or two of normal levels, and then fall sub-therapeutic for a month or so prior to their next dose. 
There are also those men who will dissolve the pellets more slowly. They may never reach a therapeutic range with the first insertion. They will then have more of the original pellets left right at the time of the second insertion. And this may put them supra therapeutic for months at a time. For these people, the injectable route may be the better choice. No therapies are perfect and all have consequences. So next week, we will be talking about the side effects and complications of testosterone therapy. In the meantime, check us out at heliostelemedicine.com where you can see our prior videos and blog posts, as well as take a self-assessment questionnaire or make an appointment to see me. You can also follow us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram at Helios Telemedicine for Men. Thank you for your time and attention. Bye for now.